Ladies and gentlemen, at this time I'd like to call the fifth meeting of the Cushing County Board of Commissioners order. Uh, the only one absent tonight is uh, Commissioner Holbrook. He is on a business meeting tonight and will not be able to be with us. Uh, we also uh, uh, have a few people here so we can conduct the meeting. We have our forum, so we will continue. <coughs> First order of business, and I'd like to call on Commissioner Hutchins to our Pledge of Allegiance and our invitation. First half of the plan, salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can gather and conduct business for our county. We ask you for knowledge and wisdom to do the things we can and give us the wisdom to realize the things that we can't, but to make things better for the community. We ask you to look over our armed forces of men and women just standing guard, just standing in the gap for us. We ask all this in my name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Something? April was supposed to do the prayer and she wouldn't. <laughs> was that half page? I got on the day here. Half page? Okay. Thank you. Uh, at this time, do we have any elected officials here? You have a representative for like the right. If you allow me, we will stop at this particular point. And with our elected officials, we have Representative Josh Ward from uh, Senator Burr's office. If you allow me, Commissioner, we'll let him come up and uh, give his greetings from Senator Bird. That way, if he desires to stay for the rest of the meeting, he can. If he doesn't, he can go out and go back to Gastonia, even though he's from Corey and all North Carolina. We won't hold that against him. But, uh, Josh, come on up, and uh, if you will, represent Senator Bird. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for having me here, um, and all the other commissioners. Senator Burke sends his greetings from D.C., um, and I'd like to personally thank you for your hospitality tonight, as well as uh, that uh, shown by your citizens to me today while I was in Cleveland County. It was really a pleasure to be here, and I've had a lot of fun and spent way too much money to show that it's already done. But you've got a great area here, um, something really to be proud of, and you're doing a great job with economic development, which shows um, just how much thought you and foresight you had a few years back when this whole thing got started. So, thank you. Thank you, Josh. Do I need to sign something you can take back to Tampa Bird show that you showed up? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you'll believe me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, and thanks, Tampa Bird, for your question. <coughs> Absolutely. Uh, this time, uh, no other elected officials. If uh, veterans, please stand. I see them all here, but this is stand. Thank you. <laughs> County Department Head, if you would name you recognize, please. Allison Moody, Human Resources. Well, thank you for coming tonight. Okay. And let's see here. The next agenda item is the agenda itself. Commissioners, I need to add a closed session to the agenda. Uh, uh, this help me out. Uh, yeah, um, under General Statute 143-318, dot 11A6, enter a closed session to discuss a personnel matter. I'll do that at the end before our commissioner reports. Uh, this time, commissioners, are there any other agenda <coughs> items? Mr. Chair, the, uh, for the special recognition of Child Abuse Awareness Month, uh, the uh, representative group we have uh, with that couldn't be here tonight, so we're going to ask to postpone that to another meeting. You want to make any comments on that as our representative from DSS? Uh, I'd be happy to. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you just make a simple copy and comment at that particular time. Okay. Any other agenda items to be added? Hearing none, all in favor of the proposed agenda, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Uh, citizens recognition at this time, anyone who wishes to speak to the commissioners about any subject.
second. Uh, if you have registered, Ms. Kelton? No, sir. Anyone who failed to register and would like to speak may do so at this time. Anyone who would like to speak can come up to the clerk and register. My name is Janet Young. My address is 450 Lincoln's Road, Louisiana. I'd like to thank you, Chair, and the County Commissioners for allowing me to speak tonight. I'm here on the behalf of Concerned Citizens of Lincoln County. We're having a meeting on June the 6th at Showmars, and it's going to be on the main causes of the Cleveland County Animal Control. Um, I know there's a task force formed right now. And some of you that are sitting <coughs> on that task force. And um, well, I'm trying to bring, I'm bringing in a lady who's been working for 16 years as a volunteer for Rutherford County uh, with animal control there. And it's worked beautiful. They're doing an amazing amount of good for these, this animal control with the limited resources that they have and the type of facility that they have. Um, I would love to have each and every one of you come out just to listen to her from her experience as a volunteer for 16 years of how she's made this, or how they, not she's made it, but how this group of volunteers and the Rutherford County Sheriff's Department runs this facility. It's not under a landfill, but it is with the Sheriff's Department. And I know I, I was at the Health Department meeting last week and I read the minutes of the task force and Willie McIntosh brought the really good point about uh, whether or not the people that work for animal control can carry weapons and they can't. Um, and that's another reason I think that it needs to be put with the sheriff's department so that these people can carry weapons. They are certified sheriff's deputies and um, there are just many other issues that she has to bring to the table, but I would love June 6th at 6.30 at Shonars just to come sit down and listen to what this lady has to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak? Oh, since she called, we would say, Stephen, thank you. Assessor's monthly report for April 2013. 
During the month of April, we have property tax abatements in the amount of $9,904. We have property tax supplements in the amount of $20,900. Item D is a budget amendment in the school supplemental tax area. We're asking you to increase uh, the school supplemental tax uh, budget by $500,000 to uh, allow the distribution of uh, increased tax collections in the budget. This is just a liability account, an in and out account, so uh, it's not something that really affects your budget. It's just a liability that needs to be increased. Item E is a budget amendment in the landfill. We're asking you to accept state government grants in the amount of $5,698 to be used to purchase two electronics recycling trailers. And item F is uh, the number seven volunteer fire department's budget for 2013-14. Uh, we're requesting the approval of the 2013-14 <coughs> budget in the amount of $179,068.50. Plus the approval of the budget, we're asking you to approve the purchase of a new brush, brush truck. It's $68,803. <coughs> it is to replace a 25-year-old existing brush truck in that fire department. That's all I have to see. Mr. you've heard the consent agenda from our county manager. At this time, are there any questions of him or any of the items that they have? Thank you, Mr. We've heard the consent agenda. We've got a motion from the vice chair. I'll place. Got a second from the discussion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please raise your right hand. Uh, Jason, the reason I asked you to go ahead with special recognition is not that we'll do the special recognition. Uh, it's very important what the topic is going to be. I, I just want to use this time to allow you to talk about your position on the DSS board. And also, um, I, I'm too old to use this particular word, but I actually talked to a few people the other day when I was speaking to Pat, and they said Jason was awesome. So I'm just going to allow you to build up on that if you want to speak just a minute because that's, this is a very important subject. Well, it, it is an important subject and Child Abuse Awareness Month. And so if we want to uh, recognize that, we've got some very active um, uh, community resident, or residents that um, uh, bring this up to our attention every year. Uh, There's Awareness Month and um, they unfortunately couldn't be here tonight. Uh, but uh, I would say, you know, as serving on, and I'm honored to serve on the DSS board, um, and, and have had the opportunity to see um, some examples. In the short time I've been there, some examples of, of the uh, uh, the situations that some of our children live in in our community, and it is um, it is heartbreaking um, uh, whenever you hear about some of these situations. Um, so it's it's definitely something I'd like to make sure we bring up uh, at whenever we can can get the uh, representatives out here. Uh, they can they can present information as far as the number of child abuse cases we've had in the county and those kind of things. Uh, but it is heartbreaking. It's one of those things that I know is important to all the commissioners up here, and we, we care deeply about this. Uh, thank you, and I, Chair. I'd uh, like to also mention um, uh, the Guardian Atlanta group that uh, works in town with DSS, and and um, I'm involved with them. And there, there's 234 children that are in DSS custody right now that are removed from the homes, uh, they're either neglected or abused in Cleveland County. So it's really important this month, this month and every month that we're thinking of those children and what we can do to try to improve in our county to support those children and to uh, reduce the number of children that are in DSS custody. If I could add one more thing too, I, I, I appreciate the uh, Show us our recently ran a, uh, an article about uh, the importance of foster parents uh, and how foster parents uh, uh, fill a, a void that's in our community. Um, we have done our our community, and, and I have I have been on record of saying that we, we really need to focus on trying to get more foster parents. For the record, uh, we have more foster parents and more foster homes um, than any of our surrounding counties do. Uh, so we have a very gener generous, um, uh, big-hearted population. Um, that still relates to uh, uh, that still equates to 
less than one percent of our population um, being willing to um, to go through the foster parent process and, and being trained and being able to take in those kids. So um, anytime that we can get the word out that we need more foster parents, we need people that can work with these kids, um, I think we ought to take that opportunity. Thanks, Jason. And you will have a follow-up on the other time. I mean, even though it's it's after the month. We will have representatives. We'll have representatives. Okay. And then I know uh, most of you have visited and been champions of the foster home and uh, like that's bringing us up. I'm not one, but you know my mother had 82 foster parents, and a lot of them still come back and visit. So I've actually three of those foster children have been adopted, so I have a brother, and two brothers, and a sister. My mother's 83 years old. She's got a, she's got a child in high school. Just take care of that. So uh, I know about the foster program. I think it's really important. Moving on, if you could just have uh, someone come in and just speak to the specific to the, to the uh, Our next event item is a public hearing. Uh, there's a community development block grant, public hearing for the Shell Building and Foothills Commerce Center. Uh, I'm going to write Paula. Here. Okay, Paula. Thank you, Good evening. Uh, the purpose of this hearing will be to receive comments from various citizens concerning the county submitting an application for a one million dollar loan from the North Carolina Department of Commerce, the economic development category of the revolving loan program. The purpose of the loan will be to construct a shell building for business recruitment. The building will be located in Shelby, North Carolina in the Foothills Commerce Park and will consist of approximately 100,000 square feet with the potential of expanding to 200,000 square feet. Total cost of the proposed project, including construction and professional services, is three million twenty-two thousand five hundred twenty-five dollars. The building shows the partnership between Cleveland County and the City of Shelby, and this is your second required public hearing for today. Any questions? Time we'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak for or against the uh, community development block grant, please come forward to the mic, state your name and address. Anyone wish to speak for or against? Steve Lane again. I speak uh, for some of the people in my community that support us. When I actually start talking about now, I show up. They get the rest of the why they don't stay here. Uh, uh, I think it's a good thing that I'm here. I have talked to Stan and Jeff and I was at the city council meeting last night. And I had uh, previous, uh, first of the month, last month, about <coughs> some property on, uh, I think it was on 18 down this way that, that the city was talking about. So, but anyway, I'm sure. You know I am. Anyone wishing to speak for or against the community development block grant? For the record, my name is Robert Williams. I live at 814 East State Scooter Trail, right in the middle of Boston. Even though that's a long mail address, I have no problem getting mail. We got any fire wood up there? <laughs> Get some. I'll give y'all a little butter and get some. The uh, reason, the reason uh, I want to say something tonight is I'm not necessarily for or against this project, but I'm what I am for is more public information uh, regarding public hearings that's available to the citizens of the county. I try to make I try to make the point of find out things that they're going on in the county. And uh, I'm interested in, in better Cleveland County, just like I hope you guys are. But I may say earlier tonight, the most secret meeting in Cleveland County is a public hearing. And if you look out here in the crowd and you see nobody, nobody knows what this block grant is all about because the information is just not available to them easily. 
And uh, I have a few minutes to, to look through this, uh, some information that Terry sent me. And uh, I just, just didn't have enough time. Uh, I found out, I guess, Monday, maybe Sunday, that uh, this public hearing was going to be fine. And uh, I've asked several times, <coughs> but I would like to see what you guys see and regarding the, the items that are spoken about in the public hearing. I don't know if you have to look too much in the right decision. Anything secret? Yes. And I did. I did a little fast, loose math. Three million dollars for for this project, um, and a similar project at the same location brought three hundred jobs. So a little math. That's ten thousand dollars per job. And if we're uh, looking at unemployment in Cleveland County. Uh, I just did a quick estimate of it, how accurate it is that we've got 50,000 people in Cleveland County that's working eight and about 10 percent unemployment. So that's that's uh, 5,000 people on work. If we're going to spend 5,000 dollars, 10,000, excuse me, uh, Uh, and you may not have anything to do with this, but it's talking about the rural 
development uh, plans will be taken away. Have you had any information about that? No. I'm just going by email, but I like to know what's going on too. I know the Senate budget, they have proposed to do away with the Royal Hotel and Royal figure out what it would take to make sure that that uh, rural development grant stays in place because, uh, Mr. Beard, can you tell us how often we can use that to help us? Uh, Mayor, considering most of the economic development projects that we've been involved in and involved either water or sewer or both uh, have involved uh, grants from the North Carolina Rural Center. Since we live in a rural county, I would be very concerned about continuing to raise that situation. Once it gets over the problem, Great matter of concern for Cleveland County and our surrounding region. Absolutely. Anything, I think lobbying right now, anything would be, uh, I mean, they've been, been operating since about 26 years, and we rely on their funds in the rural areas. I, I, I hope that won't be <laughs> true. I hope there'll be an, uh, another proposal on that one, actually, on that. But um, Bob said there are many actions that he was just really not sure. Um, during Bob's conversation with me today that um, you know, lobby your local legislators, your Senate, your House members, um, because it was in the Senate budget that we wrote out for the North Carolina Rural Center on the budget. So I think right now, uh, you know, with my advice is to get involved make sure you talk to folks who represent us up there and remind them how much we appreciate what Rural Center's done and how important it is to our county and its economic development. Thank you for putting me on the spot. handling 
grievances from employees. Um, since your agenda was was um, put out, I do have two changes to that list uh, that just came out today. So I'm going to read them off to you. Uh, what they're recommending is that um, Angie Clark from DSS, Mary Howe from the Board of Elections, Sharon Chapman, and Sharon Chapman from the Health Department be, be appointed for two-year terms. They're suggesting that Chris Martin from the Planning Department and Dwayne Brown from the Tax Department be appointed for one-year terms. And they're asking you to appoint two alternates, Joanne Owens from the library for a two-year term and Sherry Gear from finance for a one-year term. It just, with, with our change in our human resource department, we something happened for these um, terms that all kind of ended on the same year. So we're trying to get back to, to how it needs to be with staggered terms. So again, before you, I bring Angie Clark, Mary Howe, Sharon Chapman, Chris Martin, Dwayne Brown, Joanne Owens, and Sherry Gear for appointment to the Personnel Advisory Committee.